Sir, uh, what is the on the breaker? The what? The, on the, um, the actual breaker for the um, this ribbon. I just want to reset oh. everything in you know, the power. Yeah, um, it's in the kitchen. It's a kitchen. How far is it? It's not turned off yet. So you only can see that spot on the when it gets to white, right? When it gets and white. Blue. Blue. It, it stands out once in a while when I'm watching movies. and I even on the movies too. Anything else? Just that spot, right? Yeah, so I need the um, it's not a main board issue that you know, the purple spot. It's not a main board issue, it's actually what the um, causing by on the panel. Yeah, I mean if I go farther I can definitely see it. Yeah. That's it's gonna be bothersome. So I call Samsung and they said you know they're gonna review the other ticket and they probably add the other part. Mm. Which is expensive part, so they did not send me it until I confirmed the other was gotcha. caused by the other panel. So Okay, I just need your signature here. So there you have it. The dude cut my TV with a box cutter X-Acto knife. And then played it off like, oh, he just happened to find the cut there. You know, for 15 years now in this industry, I have been fighting this lie, this misinformation, this myth that authorized technicians are the ones that care about you. Authorized technicians are the ones that you can trust. Unauthorized people, those people you shouldn't trust. That's why Google removes the entire independent repair industry from the advertising platform that they run while simultaneously claiming that they support right to repair. That is why you have people on web forums that will say things like this, because they don't understand the truth. They don't understand the reality. What is it that you just watched? What you just watched was a Samsung technician direct a customer to go downstairs to turn the circuit breaker on and off. He wanted a pretext for that customer to leave the room. After that customer left the room, he looked around to see if there's a camera. And when he didn't see a camera that was obvious, he took what looked like a razor or a box cutter and walked over to the television and did this to damage it. Why did he do that? Some of the details you may find in this video by the customer of that television that had this experience. I was able to get more details by speaking with him directly. And what I learned is that that technician seemed agitated and aggravated from the notes that he would have had to wait one hour to an hour and a half for a truck to come out to bring a television screen for that television. It needed a part and it was covered under warranty, but the part was not in his truck. He would have had to wait for somebody else to come out, which means that he would have not been able to end his day when he wanted to end his day. He would have had to end his day an hour to two hours later as a result of this. He didn't want to do that. Now, there are several things that you could do when this is the case. Behind door number one, you could tell your boss and the customer, listen, man, I'm truly sorry that things are the way they are. I know this is unfair to you, and I know this is not what I need to do. I need to be able to leave at five o'clock today for a number of different reasons. I'm sorry, I will be back here to help you when I will make it up to you, but I can't do this right now. That's what a man does. That's what a person with a backbone does. What a slimy little weasel ass bitch does is tell the customer a lie to get them to leave the room as if resetting a circuit breaker is gonna fix a purple blob or stuck pixels on your television screen. This is not 1947. The difference in 120 volts versus 107 volts or 107 versus 103 on your mainline AC is not going to cause stuck pixels in your fucking television screen. He does that to get the guy to leave the room so that he can, while nobody's looking, like a bitch, take out a blade and void that gentleman's warranty. This is not an isolated case. Many people have been reporting that this is a problem they've had with Samsung and Samsung authorized service. And something that I've been banging the drum on here on this channel for 10 years, that I've been telling my customers for 15 years, is simply because somebody is authorized by the manufacturer does not mean that there is an incentive structure in place for them to care about you. I have a video that is about 11 years old now where I go over the metrics and the performance metrics that are utilized by authorized repair centers and why it is they don't care about you. I have videos in this channel where I show you there is a bent 
pin and a screen cable. Worst case scenario, you're paying 150 to fix it. Best case scenario, you bend it back with tweezers, and the manufacturer is telling you it is $2,000 to replace. And here, you literally have them destroying the customer's property because the guy wants to go home early. Time and time again, I can provide evidence of how you are not having your interests served best by the manufacturer. And time and time again, the propaganda continues. Are there times that the manufacturer may be able to provide a better deal? Yes. Sometimes they provide a better deal because they have turned the screws so hard that they have cut us out of the supply chain completely to the point where I can't even buy parts to do my job, which is actually unfortunate, which is kind of where I am right now 15 years in and why I don't see much of a future in this particular industry. That being said, unauthorized repair, it's, it's, it's kind of like being a short guy in the dating market. You, you ever go on Tinder and you see the profiles that people have? You know, I'm never going to forget this. I went to Six Flags when I was like nine or ten years old. All the rides at this amusement park, I forget if it was Six Flags or something else, it's something along the lines of, you need to be this tall to ride, and it was four foot six. I was four foot five and three quarters. So I went there with my dad, and 90% of the rides I couldn't go on because of a quarter of an inch. I'm never going to forget thinking this. It's like, okay, you know what? As bad as this feels right now that I can't play with everybody else at Six Flags because I'm short for my age, quarter of an inch later, everything is going to open up for me. And then I went on a dating website in 2012. Six, let me just say that Six Flags is not the only place where you're going to see signs that say you must be this tall to enjoy this ride, or in my case, you know, this tall. Surprising number of people put that in their profile. But in all seriousness, the short man, like, we understand how it is. We got to be more charming. We have to be more interesting. We have to be better looking. We have to be in better shape. We have to be more successful. We have to have houses that have views like this. Whereas somebody who's taller, I don't know, maybe they could just live in a $500 studio apartment. My point, which I'm probably making in a silly fashion, is the unauthorized repairman has an incentive structure to provide you with better service because we are not trusted. Most people trust the brand name that they purchased the product from. They trust that since this company made the product, therefore, they know how to fix the product and they're going to fix it with the proper parts and the proper tools and everything else. Since this belief is so far ingrained in the minds of your average everyday person, we have to put in 300% effort. When the manufacturer says they can fix it in seven days, we need to be able to fix it in seven minutes in order for you to feel as comfortable with us as you are with them. We need to be half the price. We need to be twice as knowledgeable. We need to have a smile on our face while they send somebody to your house that destroys your property. Unauthorized repair people have to earn your trust, which is the incentive structure that unauthorized repair people have to do a better job than the manufacturer. The manufacturer has trust by default. They are the manufacturer. In the instruction manual, in the PDF that came with it, on the box, it says, if you have a problem, call us. And it has their logo. And when you call them, they're the first stop. As a result of being the first stop, as a result of always getting that attention, as a result of always having that, they don't have to do as much work. At a core level, they will still get people calling them and they will still make money, even if they don't do a great job. You know who's not able to make money unless they do a great job? Us my colleagues in this industry, my colleagues in repair in general, even if it is not in my field of products. We have to do, similar to the short man on Tinder, three times the work. We have to be three times as successful. We have to be three times as charming and interesting and exciting and invigorating and entertaining and sympathetic and empathetic to get the same results because by default, we're at a disadvantage. But that disadvantage is the very reason that I think more people should be open to trusting the unauthorized technician than the authorized technician. We have to offer you a better deal. We have to fix the individual components. We have to fix your battery for $700 rather than fix your battery for $60,000. We have to replace your display cable for $150 rather than replace your top case, your display, and your motherboard for $2,000. We have to provide a compelling reason to use us because our name and our phone number is not on the box. We are not your default option. We are not your first choice. The reality, like with the man that's five, six in the dating site, we are not your first choice. And as a result of not being your first choice, we have to convince you as to why we should be your first choice from your second or your third or your fourth because you got, okay, the manufacturer could fix it or the manufacturer authorized place could fix it or I could sell it or I could buy a new one or I could, you know, have the dude that works out of a park because he's fucking broke do the job for me that I found on Craigslist, which is where I was in 2008. 
We have to provide a compelling case. We need to know more. When you call us, we need to say, I think your problem is between pin 17 and 18 of the ISL 6259 where the current circuit and circuit is for the battery, not for the charger, but for the battery based on your behavior and based on the fact that you have quarter fan spin rather than the machine turning on and simply not charging. I need to be able to tell you that for you to have the same level of confidence in me that you have in somebody who wears a blue fucking polo shirt and calls himself a genius. We have to do more work. We've always had to do more work. And that's one of the reasons that I think people should give unauthorized repair a chance. Because if we fail, if we get a couple of bad reviews, if we have somebody say, don't use that guy, we're done. Samsung is still going to be getting repairs in. They are still going to be getting paid for repairs, even after this comes out, even after they got that post deleted on Reddit, even after everything that occurred, I guarantee you they will still get business. If this happened to Tim Herman, to Jessa Jones, to Mark Schaefer, to Jesse Cruz, to me, I'm done. I'm out of business. I will never fix something again. I would never be trusted again. I would never be able to get a job again. Oh, well, technically that's kind of the case right now, but you get the point. This is something that it would be an issue. We would not be able to make money ever again. Samsung is still going to print money from their repair department. There will be maybe a 1% or 2% reduction max, I guarantee it. But let's move on here. Let's move on to the different stage of this story. Samsung tried to get this gentleman to take his video down, and they'd wanted him to take his post down. When he didn't take his post down, they seemed to make privacy complaints. Well, you could see him. You could see the technician there. You didn't blur out his face. Why should you blur out his face? He entered the customer's home, he made a conscious decision to commit a crime in that customer's home. Your issue is not that somebody who works for your company did that. Your issue is not that you have come up with an incentive structure for your authorized repair centers to where this is something that happens on a semi-regular basis. Your issue is that you got caught and that there's a record of it. Let it be known that Samsung's first concern here was not that they have set up an incentive structure to where on a mass level, people are actually destroying customer property rather than fix it under warranty. Their first concern is that they got caught and you can see the man's face. Well, I have this to say. As a privacy advocate, as somebody who believes in privacy, as somebody who tries to get as much of the cloud bullshit out of his life as he can, if I enter your home and I destroy $3,000 worth of your property, that's a crime. And the moment that I commit a crime in your home, I lose all expectations of privacy. If I wanted to keep my expectations of privacy, what I could do is keep my razor in my pocket rather than use it to scratch your television after going out of my way to, in a premeditated way, get you out of the room so that you wouldn't see what I did. If that person wants to be the bitch, they can be the whole bitch and take accountability and responsibility for what they did, as can Samsung. Moving on to Reddit. Reddit actually allowed this to happen and deleted the post. This post had over 15,000 upvotes. I actually had to go through YouTube and search to figure out what was going on because when I went to the Reddit thread to read about it, I couldn't find anything because they deleted it. Does Samsung pay for marketing on Reddit? Does Samsung run astroturfing campaigns on Reddit? Have they done this type of thing before? Does Reddit have any money to lose as a result of not removing content that Samsung isn't happy with? To be clear, I'm not saying that this is some sort of vast conspiracy. I'm not saying that the CEO of Samsung is going out of his way and telling repair centers to break people's shit. But there are incentive structures that you set up. This has happened at my own company, and I'd like to explain an example of it. I had a billing system that wasn't working. I was stupid, and I was using PayPal instead of Stripe a long time ago for my forum, and I was also dumb enough to use vBulletin instead of Zenforo. Zenforo is the shit. vBulletin sucks. There was a double billing issue where sometimes people would click once, but it would sign them up for two or three or four subscriptions. Once I figured out what was going on, I realized that less than 6% of the people that were getting double billed actually complained about it. Behind door number one, I give you a full refund, an apology, and maybe I even give you an extra 50 bucks every single time somebody contacts me over this issue. Behind door number two, I choose to just not look into it. I, I mean, I, I have an idea what the problem is, but you know, as long as I don't look into it, I don't care. And perhaps I have a monthly bonus for my employees based on the amount of revenue we make. And that forum revenue is included in that. So now I'm not telling my employees to go out of their way to double bill people. But do you think that employee is going to stay an extra two or three minutes? Do you think they're going to take time out of their day to look into a reason that may, we may be taking money that nobody's complaining about that, that we need to give back? No. As a business owner, as a leader, as a project manager, as a department lead, 
you are accountable and responsible for the incentive structures that you set up within your business. You do not need to say out loud, destroy people's shit. That's not how this type of stuff works. You can simply have incentives that align and not look at it when you're making extra money or when you're taking less time to do your job. But the problem with these types of things is they always come out at the end of the day because the type of people that subscribe to these systems, they're not very smart. They may not notice a smartphone camera that's sitting in a pillow on the couch when they think that they may not realize that there are things that are actually operated by battery. Like This guy thought he was smart. Turn off the circuit breakers so that the power goes out so that you can't see him scratching your shit. Or maybe like, that, that there's no way that maybe something in the room was battery powered or maybe you would come back in time or maybe you were being watched already. The people that do these types of things are not very smart. I think that there's this weird dichotomy, which is, Lewis, people are not smoking cigars in a room, going out of their way to screw over repair people. Versus, no, there actually is a conspiracy. Look at all these things that they did. They don't make parts available. They don't make chips available. They go out of their way to serialize parts and they require calibrations they don't give you. At the end of the day, the truth is in the middle. The truth is that you do not need to have a written in blood document for incentive structures to align. And I think that Corporate executives, as well as management, should be held accountable and responsible for the incentive structures that they set up within their company. It would have been exceptionally easy for me to not only, not only keep double billing people for a very long period of time, but for my employees, if I set up the incentive structure that way, for them to not look at it. Not to be the type of person that's like, I'm glad we're doing it, but just, man, it's extra work to do bookkeeping. I'm, a t I'm not gonna go into that. And conversely, for me to not notice. When somebody realized they got double billed with 30 bucks, I could have given them $200 back from all the money I took from everybody else. That person may have even left me a five-star review. They may think that I'm a swell guy. They may tell all their friends at the end of the day that I'm a good dude to do business with. I take accountability to the point of even giving them twice their money back. There are a lot of shitty things that you can do as a boss. There's a lot of shitty things you can do as a business owner. And if you lie to yourself enough, as incentives tend to converge and align towards people doing stuff like this, you might even be able to tell yourself at the end of the day and believe it that you're a good person. I'm here to tell you, Samsung, you are not. Let's go out of our way to summarize this. You have gone out of your way to try to destroy the independent repair industry by going out of your way to sue every single person that sells a product that you claim is infringing on your patents because of a pixel pattern. You have gone out of your way to AstroTurf major websites to try and create demands for your brand. You have lobbied against right to repair by saying that we install TikTok on people's phones because you are one of the people that pays CTA who has lobbied against this. And then without ever apologizing for slandering us, you started doing what you were accusing us of, of pre-installing TikTok on customers' phones. And then the creme de la creme is when you decide that you are going to destroy customer property. And at the end of the day, instead of take accountability and responsibility, get mad at the fact that somebody tried to hold you accountable. We're not mad that our staff did that. We're mad that you took a video of it. Shame on you, Samsung. Shame on you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, check it out. I figure I should show you the view since I mentioned it. Okay, I'm probably messing up white balance and all that because I'm a crap cameraman. I don't know how to set up a camera. But take a look at this. Is that not a gorgeous sunset? Is that not a gorgeous sunset? Shut up, dog.